Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. It's 13 days to go to your GCSE Maths exam. Uh, 13 days, unlucky for some, but not for you because you're doing your Maths revision and you're going to do really well in your exam. But today we're going to be focused on formula and solving equations. So we're going to be looking at how to, we've looked at solving equations, we're now going to be looking at how to form equations. So perhaps we're given ages of people and we're given the sum of their ages and we're told what the sum of their ages is. And then we form an equation using the algebra, we put it equal to the sum of their ages and then we solve it. Or it could be that you're forming equations such as the angles and the triangle, so such as the cold mass revision card. And if you do the cold mass revision card and formula solving equations, that'll be useful for you as well. We're going to be looking at formula solving equations today. There'll be some questions that I go through, and there'll be lots for you to try as well. So remember to press pause and try those questions. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at formula and solving equations. So in this video, we've looked at how to form expressions. With 69 days to go, you've looked at formula expressions. And with 67 days to go, you've looked at how to solve equations. And today is just about putting those two topics together. So what I'm going to do is I've got a load of questions for you to try. So press pause and to try each question. And then afterwards, I'll explain how to do it. Okay, so here's our first question. It says, Daniel is X years old. So we've got Daniel, he's X years old. Daisy is five years older than Daniel. So she's five years older than him. Chris is twice twice his age, so Chris is twice Daniel's age, and the sum of their ages is 53, so when you add up their ages, we get 53. And part A says form an equation, and part B says solve the equation and find Daniel's age. So press pause now and try this question. Okay, so first of all, we'll look at Daniel. So in terms of Daniel, we know that he is X years old. Okay, so in terms of Daisy, Daisy is five years older than Daniel. So he's X, she's five years older. So she's gonna be X plus five. She's five years older than him. We would add five to his age to get her age. And Chris is twice Daniel's age. So Chris is twice Daniel's age, so we would double his age. So we we're gonna multiply by two, so that'd be two X. So we now know that Daniel is X years old, Daisy is X plus five years old, and Chris is two X years old. And the sum of their ages is 53. So if we add up these ages, these algebraic expressions, we then know that's equal to 53. So let's add them up and see what we get. So X plus X plus two X is four X's, and then we've still got our plus five. So the sum of their ages is four X plus five. Now we know the sum of their actual ages is 53. So that means that four X plus five equals 53. So four X plus five is equal to 53. And that's our equation. And if you got that for part A, well done. Okay, part B says solve the equation and find Daniel's age. So we need to solve this equation. So we're gonna take away five from both sides because we wanna get the X on its own. So we wanna get rid of this add five, first of all. So if we take away five from both sides on the left-hand side, we had four X plus five, we're taking away the five, so we'll be left with four X. And on the right-hand side, we're 53, take away five would be 48. So we've got the four X equals 48. Now let's divide by four and divide by four, and we get that x equals 12. So that means that Daniel is 12 years old, and that's it, and the question says find Daniel's age, so the answer is 12. If we were asked to find Daisy's age, we would add five to that, so that'd be 17, and if we were asked to find Chris's age, we would double it to be 24. And we can actually check our answer by adding up those ages if we wanted to, but in this question, we were just asked to get an equation, so that would be our equation that we needed to solve, and we needed to solve the equation to find Daniel's age, and we found that his age is 12, so his age is 12. And that's it. And if you got those, well done. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. I'm not going to talk too much about this question because I don't want to give too much away in terms of this question. But here we've got a triangle and we've been asked to find X. So feel free to press pause now and find X. Okay, so here we've got an isosceles triangle. We know it's isosceles because we've got these little dashes here and here. And that means that this triangle is isosceles. It means the length of this side is the same as the length of this side. And it's got a line of symmetry. So it would have a line of symmetry vertically like so. So it means that this angle is equal to this angle. So this angle over here would be x plus 20. Okay, so those two angles are the same. And then we've obviously got the third angle is 2x. Now the question asks us to find x, so we're going to need to form an equation, because obviously we're forming and solving equations today. So in terms of this equation, so we know that these three angles would add together to be 180 degrees. Okay, so let's add together the algebraic expressions. So we've got 2x plus x plus x, that'll be 4x's all together. And then in terms of the numbers, we've got plus 20 and plus 20, so that'll be plus 40. So if we add up the algebraic expressions for the angles, that's equal to 4x plus 40. Now we know the angles in a triangle add together to be 180, so we're then gonna write equals 180. And now we just need to solve this equation. So let's take away 40 and take away 40. So we get that 4x would be equal to 140. And let's divide by four 
and divide by 4, and then x is equal to 140 half to 70, and half again would be 35. So x is equal to 35 degrees. So that means x is 35 degrees, and the question just said find x, so the answer is 35, or 35 degrees. If we were asked to find the size of each angle, this angle will be 2x, so 2 times 35 is equal to 70 degrees. This one is x plus 20, so 35 plus 20 is 55 degrees, and this one over here would be 55 degrees also. And as you can see, 55 plus 55 is 110, plus 70 is 180. So that's it, we know we're right. Uh, but in this question, we formed the equation by adding together the algebraic expressions. We knew this angle was the same as this one because an isosceles triangle has that line of symmetry. Uh, and from this line and this line being the same length, we can then figure out that's the line of symmetry. So these two angles are the same. So then you add together the algebraic expressions. We got that's equal to 4x plus 40. We put it equal to 180. We solved it. We found that x was 35. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question, we've been given a rectangle and we've been asked to find the perimeter of the rectangle. And interestingly, the lengths of the sides are given as algebraic expressions. We've got both of the widths are the same. They're both 2x plus 1 centimetres and 2x plus 1 centimetres. But the length, the top length has got a length of 11x minus 2 centimetres and the length of the bottom is x plus 18 centimetres. So can you find the perimeter of this rectangle now? Okay, now if I was to give this question to students, I might just give it as I've given it to you, find the perimeter of this rectangle, and because obviously you've done loads of revision, this might be quite straightforward for you. If I was to give this uh, question to some students, what I might do is I might actually make it, it break it down into steps. So my first step would have been to explain why 11x minus 2 equals x plus 18. That might be my first step, explain why 11x minus 2 equals x plus 18. And the response I'd be looking for is that the opposite sides of a rectangle have got the same length, that here the 11x minus 2 centimeters must be equal to x plus 18 centimeters that would be the first step i'll be looking for part b then would be to solve the equation so let's solve this equation so we want to get all the x's on one side and the numbers on the other so we don't want this x here so let's take away x and take away x on the left hand side we would get 11x take away x is 10x and then we've got subtract 2 and then it's equal to and on the right hand side we have that's equal to 18 that's equal to 18. Okay, so we've now got 10x minus 2 equals 18. We want to get the x on its own, so let's get rid of this minus 2. So let's add 2 and add 2 to both sides. On the left-hand side, we're adding 2 to get rid of the minus 2, so we're left with 10x. And on the right-hand side, we'd have 18, add 2 is equal to 20. And then finally, we want to find out what x is, so let's divide by 10 and divide by 10, and we get that x is equal to 2. Okay, so we've now found that x is equal to 2. And then my last part of the question would then be to find the perimeter. So now we know that x is equal to 2. We've got 2 plus 18, so that's equal to 20 centimetres. We've got 2x plus 1, so 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so that's 5 centimetres. This one, 11 times 2 is 22, take away 2 is 20 centimetres also. And here, 2 times 2 is equal to 4, plus 1 is 5, so that's 5 centimetres. So we've got the length, the width, the length, and the width. So to find the perimeter, we just need to do 20 plus 5 plus 20 plus 5. And that would be equal to 50 centimetres. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at one last question. So this time we've got Andy has X pence. Kelly has seven pence more than Andy. Georgia has got nine pence less than Andy. And the total amount of money they have is £1.48. And the question says, work out how much money Georgia has. So feel free to press pause now to solve this question. Okay, so in terms of this question, let's write down their names. We've got Andy, we've got Kelly, and we've got Georgia. And we know that Andy has X pence, so he's got X pence. Kelly's got seven pence more, so that's going to be x plus seven, because she's got seven p more than him. And George has got nine p less than Andy, so that means we take away nine from how much Andy had, so that would be x minus nine. So we've got expressions for how much money each of them has, and we know that the total amount of money they have is one pound forty-eight or one hundred and forty-eight pence if we change it into pence. So let's add together the algebraic expressions. X plus x plus x is three x. We've then got seven take away nine, and seven take away nine is minus two, so minus two. So if we're going to now conform an equation, we know that 3x minus 2 would be equal to, and I'm going to work in pence here, 148 pence. Now, we want to find out what x is, so let's add 2 and add 2, because we want to get rid of this minus 2. So that would leave us on the left-hand side with minus 2, we're adding 2, so it's going to leave us with 3x. And on the right-hand side, that's equal to 150. And then if we divide by 3 and divide by 3, we get that x is equal to 50p. So that means that Andy has 50p. Kelly has 7 pence more than Andy, so she's got 57p. And George has 9p less than Andy, so she's got 41 pence. And if you add these values up, you get £1.48. And the question said, how much money does Georgia have? That is 41p. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at formula solving equations. I really hope you find it useful. It's one of those topics where we're not entirely sure what situation or context the examiner might come up with. You know, what are, you know, will it be the ages? Will it be the angles in a straight line? Will it be the perimeter of a shape, perhaps? 
uh, will it be the cost of items? And we're told that a certain item costs 25p more than another item and so on. So we're not entirely sure of the context. I would highly recommend the practice questions today. So in the description below, if you go to the description below, there's a link to my practice questions on formula and solvent equations. That'll be a really useful one for you. So thanks very much. I really hope you found this video useful. Tomorrow there'll be 12 days to go to GCSE maths exam. So keep up the hard work. i be, you know, making sure that you're revising the evening, you're doing your past papers, you're going through and doing practice uh, questions on home maths as well. And any particular topic that you find tricky, make sure that you're doing something about it. So go to Corbin Maps and watch the revision video on that topic just to make sure that you, you're brushing up and you're getting those areas that you find tricky, making them secure. So keep up the hard work, you're doing really well. I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Cheers, bye.